This is the true story of a New York City boy with big town hopes and small neighborhood dreams of becoming BFFs with the Real Housewives and other Bravo celebrities. Then, one day, that dream actually came true. Let me take you behind the velvet rope. Hey guys, this is David. Welcome back behind the velvet rope. Well, we are here. I feel with one of the biggest names. I know you you you're gonna, we're going to get into this. One of the biggest names in RHONY. Somebody who was talked about on the show more more than I think people that are on screen the whole damn time. We are here with the one and only Harry Dubin. What's going on, Harry? Good morning. How are you? Fantastic. First of all, thank you for coming downtown. My pleasure. You know, I have this weird thing where I just think everyone from the Upper East Side never comes downtown. Is that true? Don't go below 42nd Street. See? There you go. Well, I never used to go above 14th Street. Now I live on 20th. That's good. But, you know, so I feel like we should talk about, before we get into you, we should talk about where we met. We met at the obvious place. The place that your reputation is that you are every single night. And I can attest, you're not there every night. Not every night. The one and only Regency. Because I've been there nights when when like you haven't been there. But you're there a lot of nights. Yeah. Sometimes you make the night. Uh, thank you. I mean, or, I mean, you know, maybe you meant... Oh, you by make... the way, I saw your um, chunky designer friend last night. He was there last night? Uh-huh. Nolan? Oh, was he with Kat? Yes. I heard Kat was there, Nolan and Anna. Yes. See, I know. They were text. I just, I, I, I. Dave, how did you get this? My oh. artwork. So my artwork is up and Harry is looking at it. Now, what do you love about this artwork? It's like Charlie and the Ugly Angels. See, well, you know what's really funny is originally these four women were younger and then I had to. be much older. You think they should be much? I mean, because those are supposed to be the housewives. No particular housewives. Although everyone thinks this looks like Sonia, and people think this one with the dark hair. I don't know. They think it's supposed to be Teresa from New Jersey. I don't know where they get that. And they think this is supposed to be Kelly Bensimon. Do you see any of that? None. Me either. That looks like my ex-wife, though. Aviva. Yes. We need to discuss. We're gonna we're gonna get into all of that. Go ahead. Because I was at Aviva's house, but so we met at the Regency. The Regency, I feel, is I really feel like it's the Cheers of New York City. I do. The reason I go there is because I work on Fifty Sixth Street, and I live on Sixty Third, and it's halfway in between. And everybody that lives on the Upper East Side at the end of work goes and have a cocktail there. Very simple. Just like any other neighborhood. And I have to say, they have a great pour there. They do a heavy pour. You have to know the bartenders, of I, course. Okay, now, and I do have to say this. This is serious. I mean this. I do get a better – I get a good pour anyway, but when I sit at your table, like the other night, I get the best pour possible. It's my drink. That shit was filled to the brim. So I – if you sit at Harry's table, your pour is – a lot better than if you don't sit at Harry's table. But it's still good. Um, so the Regency is a great place, but let's not advertise it too much. We don't want everyone in the world to go there. You know what I'm saying? Of course. Now, let's go back to – tell me about you. Like, start at the beginning. I mean, you don't have to be so specific, but like, where were you born? I know. You don't want to talk about that be. stuff. Like, are you from the New York area? I'm from Washington, D.C., Bethesda, Maryland. Went to Walt Whitman High School. Had a great childhood. Grew up there. Grew up there, went to Syracuse. I'm in the real estate business. Knew that you were- a beautiful son. I have a beautiful ex-wife. We're going to talk about- I, I, I met them both, but I, I sat down with Aviva for an interview and was in that- I love her apartment. It's very nice. It's okay. And your son walked in during it and was going out to play some type of sports, I think. Uh, all right, get on with the questions. Okay. You know where we're going to go. Let's talk about – well, let's start with Aviva. That's your first wife? Yes, my only wife. I, 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 I like to that get I to know. That I know of. It, exactly. So you married – Aviva. was Aviva – when did you meet her? 96, 97, and we went out on a date. Yes. She didn't like me. She dated a guy for a year. She dumped him. 
Then we went out again, and I invited her to a wedding. And 10 months later, we were married. Really? Yep. And you guys met just out and about in the city? Met her at a place where Lava is right now called Paper Moon. Okay. And she was sitting with another girl I dated. And I asked her to introduce me to the girl she was sitting with. And that's the way it happened. Interesting. Interesting. And you married her for a few years-ish? About five years. Okay. And then you guys got divorced. You know, and it's funny because when I went and sat down with Aviva, Aviva, Aviva stays home. She likes to stay home. She doesn't go out. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what she told me. I said, let's like meet for a drink sometime. She basically was like, it would have to be in my apartment. She doesn't go out. Nope. I mean, and I'm that's fine. It just seems so opposite from you. She actually has anxiety. That's the problem. That's the impression. She can't even go in the park. That's the impression I got. I didn't believe her that she didn't really go out. And then I started like watching her on Instagram and I'm like, she, I mean, not that Instagram is everything, but she doesn't really go out that much. Nope. But I had a great time with Aviva. Now, at this point, have you met, like when you're married to Aviva, did you, let's go into Sonia for a minute. Cause this really is what people want to hear. Let's just talk about all the women. Okay. First of all. Yes. I met Sonia in Washington, DC at Cafe Milano. She was dancing and the Gypsy Kings were playing. And so I walked up to her and we started dancing. And this was before the days of cell phones. So we're talking a long time ago. Bef- this is way before Aviva. I had a car phone. I didn't have a cell phone. Which in that day was a big deal. I'm not that old. I'm 54. And this was when I was in my 20s. And so she was with another friend of mine. We had a great time. She said she was staying at the Park Hyatt Hotel. Which there's 10 of them in Washington, D.C. Yeah. She left. And I scoured the city looking for her hotel room. Really? I knew her name, Sonia. Really? Yes. So I scoured the city looking for Sonia. It took so you- me about an hour. Found her hotel room. She got dressed. I took her to the the ghetto in Washington, D.C., to a jazz bar. We had a blast. She took me back to her hotel room. This is on the first day? On the first, not okay. even the first day. It was just the first time I ever met her. And she bathed me. Like in a bath? In a bathtub. She said, I need to bathe you. Pretty good. Interesting. Not bad. I mean, that's... Listen, I've never had that happen on really any date. Like, I mean, just on a date. It was great. And this day, I tell her that. And you guys were like in your 20s at this point? Yes. And you, what what was she doing in Washington? Working there? She was there visiting a girlfriend of hers. And she had a quasi PR company and catering. And she was a maitre d'. Interesting. And you literally went to every single hotel and just went to the front desk and said, I need to see Sonia. Yep. I don't have a last name. Yep. And those were the days where a hotel the was last like... last name back then was Tremont. Yes. And hotels in those days, because this was prior to all the stuff that goes on, where they were just like, sure, we'll tell sure. you. No problem. Wow. I'll give you the data. Interesting. And so then you went out, then she bathed you. Okay. So then what happens? Like you... I flew up to New York. She came back down to Washington. Then New Year's Eve came. I went to ski. She went to Miami with my sister and other girls. And it never really ended with her, but it ended. Right. We've been very close since then. Um, so you I dated. I utmost respect, love her to death. Um, we did date until that New Year's Eve, and then I got engaged to someone else. Aviva? No. Someone could. And so how long was that dating period for New Year's Eve? Like six months, two months, a year? I'd say around a year. Wow. And then it ended, and then you got engaged to someone else. For a minute. And then you're like, this isn't right, let me call this off. Got it done. And then did you go back to Sonia? On and off for really? 20 years. 
And this is, I mean, that's kind of how I think the viewers of the Real Housewives first met you mm -hmm. was through Sonia. Hundred percent. And then what was this? Remember, like later on, and I actually lose track of time myself. Remember later on, like you were giving. There was all this talk about like you were going to give her a ring, or you gave her a ring. Well, I'll get into that. Yeah, that's a little silly. Yes. So Sonia, back in the day, after I got divorced from Aviva, would throw cocktail parties at her house. I would buy the liquor, she'd buy the food, whatever. This is like every week. This is like every week, one day a week. And it was when she was getting divorced from her ex-husband. <coughs> and Luann was there. So The we, Countess. What we would do is we would go to Sonia's home, her townhouse, and then we would go to a place called Frederick's, which is on Madison Avenue. We'd all walk. And it's still there. And it's not there anymore. I didn't it's think so. It's called uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. That's not important. And we would walk over there, and there'd be two guys at every table with like 10 girls. And the two guys would pay for the dinner. That makes sense. Whilst Luann decided that she didn't want me to go to the dinner, and as we're walking over to this restaurant, it's called Bar Italia now, she yanks me and t gets me into a cab, and we go to the Carlisle and listen to music and had a very nice evening. But that's the way Luanne is. She goes after what she wants, and she gets it Yes. You can't really deny that. That's pretty good. And this is what we, that was kind of played out on the show itself. It was? I believe so. I believe so, yeah. I don't know. So you met, like, when was this? Like, what year? Like, it was during The Real Housewives, like, when it was yes. on the air. Yes. So you met, so Sonia you've known forever. Luann. It was before Sonia was on the, the show. It right. It was probably a year before the show. Right. And Sonia joined, and then my ex joined. So you Probably met, when Kelly was on too. Do you know Kelly in real life? Very well. Any? I know them all. I am starting to see that. So Luann, you met through Sonia at the party. Luann did not want to go to dinner. Wanted you to come home with her, and just got what she wanted. She got exactly what she wanted. And was that a one-time thing? No. It was more than a one-time thing. Yes. Okay, and we're listen. We're gonna get into some things later on. Okay, now and that was it with Luann. Like you don't do do. You, I mean, you kind of speak to everybody now. I mean, you kind of all travel. Totally friends with everybody. Yeah, you kind of all travel in the same circles. I saw Ramona two nights ago at the Regency. I saw I her last a, week at an Oscar party. She oh. was dead. I you know it's really funny. I was supposed to go to that Oscar party, and it. I didn't think anyone in the world. I mean, it could four people there. It looked, I mean, even before I went, I was like, why would I go to this? Like, a friend of mine was going, and it didn't, but then I saw pictures the next day. I didn't even, Ramona was there, and I was like, Ramona was there? She's good friends with them. Uh, yeah, she must She's be. She's a loyal friend. Oh. She's good. If I knew Ramona was there, I might have gone to the party. Well, I was actually at the Regency watching the Oscars, which was also dead. There was not a single person there. It was dead as can be. Um... What was I going to say? Okay, so now, Kelly, you know in real life, too. Anything, any past with Kelly? Kelly is yes, dropped out. Mm -hmm. I've known Kelly for probably 30 years. She dated several of my friends. I hung out with her in Florida. We had a great weekend. Tinsley was there. A um, lot of drama with Tinsley. Everyone seems to have a lot of drama with – I love Tinsley. Am I missing something? Everyone seems to have a lot of drama with Tinsley. Tinsley creates her own drama. I, I could see that. I mean, she's just a train wreck. That's what everyone seems to say. Maybe that's I like why her. I like her. Yeah. I like her, but she's a train wreck. Do you, do you know Scott, her fiancé? No, I've never met him. Do you yes, think I've met him once. She's a girl who wants to be married. I get the sense. That Tinsley really wants. To, I mean, that's just my sense. Like, I don't know her that well. She wants the knot to be big. She does, right? Very so, big. So, Kelly, you've had a moment with. 
Yes. Tinsley, no. No. Bethany, no. I've known Bethany very long. But no moments. No. And you're not interested in having a moment. I think you told me that one night at the Regency. She's She's a difficult, tough, pretty woman. She's tough. You don't know Alex McCord now. I met her. Of course. I mean, she's in Australia now. She's a couple. What a a little couple. bit. Simon is very strange. Odd. Every time I saw him, they were just odd. They're and now they're in Australia. God bless them. Keep Seriously. them down under. Seriously, I, I'm okay with them not coming back <laughs> here. That's for sure. Um, let me think. Sonia, Luann, Aviva. Oh, really? The biggest question. I mean, I have a lot of other questions, but Ramona. That's really. I have a very checkered past with Miss Ramona, as I'm sure you know, a lot of people have. Ramona's tough to people outside of her circle. I mean, I'm sure she's very lovely to you. <laughs> I call her the singer stinger. You do realize that's that's my that's name for hilarious. her. It's like she is a tough one. There's something about her that I love, but she is has a very good heart. It, I, mean, I really like her a lot. She is a great mother. She was a great wife. She's a good friend to all of her friends. Um, I've seen those batty eyes very close up. You've had moments with her. Well, I can, we got busted. Yes. Kissing. That was it. That was it, right? Nothing else. Okay. That's why I thought. I think Tinsley took the picture, to tell you the truth. Really? Yeah. I mean, you're in a nightclub. It's private. They take and, a picture. What are you going to do? Tinsley was there. I got busted. And she was the only one there. Yep. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that that picture went viral. That was all over the place. I mean, that alone. I mean, a moment in time when there was silence and all of a sudden that stupid picture shows up. And it's just kissing. Just kissing. Would you ever want something more with Ramona? Good friendship. That's it. You're listen, you I have not seen the kind heart. I feel it, but I just she her and I are like She's lovely, and then it's like I'm like a ghost. Like when I bring girlfriends around, Ramona, she ghosts them. Like puts her hand in her face and says, yeah. don't doesn't even recognize them. She, yeah. No, that's how she is. You're like in a very, you know, she speaks to a very select group of people. Well, I, was, I introduced her to Missy Poole. One of her BFFs. And mm-hmm. there's that Maria. I like Maria. I like Maria. Maria is a lovely woman. Anyway, they're all they're all great, whippy. There are a lot of lovely people out there. I hate the word lovely. You you just love them all. You're just yeah. They're, you know what? I do love them all. You do. Even now, my ex-wife. You're you're still really close with Aviva, right? Listen, I have I'm not to be. I, I'm not pulling out receipts here. I just you know yeah. I mean, listen, Aviva is I. Oh, do you know like uh, like Heather Thompson? Very well. Jill Zarin. Yes. What do you think of Jill? The epitome of Long Island. Oy. Ooh. I, I, like a vault. Yeah. Cavilta fish. Yeah. I mean, about it. I'm Jewish. I You're Jewish. Her. Dating a friend of mine. He seems Gary's like a nice a great guy. guy. He's, a, he's in the schmatza business. She seems happy with him. Very happy. I Jill's, you know, I'm trying to think who else. Heather's a very nice girl. Is she? Yeah. yeah, I've sat down with Heather before. Good girl. She's a good girl. What about Jules? Jules Weinstein. No one ever seems to know her. She lived downtown. She was on the show for one season. She doesn't even live here anymore. She moved to Florida. She's I, thin, like dark I, hair. I met her. I don't know her. Um, is she the one that her husband did something and they dumped, they dumped each other? I think so. I have no She's idea. the one that they say, like, I think, I mean, she dealt with it on the show. Like, she had, she had eating issues who cares let me see (laughs) i mean so the thing is this is what i was you know this is what they say if this is in a bravo blog oh no no it's not well that's what you said the other day you said everyone hates you i don't think everyone hates you i i I think everyone hates me on the internet there are a lot of haters Uh, i can hide behind that stupid little 
Yeah. The title of theirs means nothing. They're I'm sitting. Not go track them. They're sitting in someone's basement. Right. And like, and the thing is, like, if you engage, that's it. Forget like, it. They, because then they feel like they have a friend in the world, and like someone's actually listening to them. The key it's is any just blog. ignore. It could be a real estate blog. It could be. It's any true. Blog. You just They're ignore. All haters. You just it, listen. I have a lot of haters. No, but this is not. This is not so bad. Bravo says. If you were going to be on the show, that this should be your tagline. You know the tagline when it starts? Right. They, I, I, have, I have one I made up for myself, but they say this should be yours. I got a trust fund, but you can't trust me. I'm not saying That's this. silly. Silly. You know, they say you know that you're like the Peter Pan. Listen, people say that about me too. I mean, I'm no spring chicken, and I'm like still single. So, I mean, I don't know. At least you were married once. Um, according to Sonia, you've known each other since we were very young. We were going steady. He cheated on me when he was in DC and I was in New York. Nothing's changed. He's a Peter Pan. I mean, blah, this is blah, like, blah. right. This is like a year ago. They talk about Ramona. Luann says, who hasn't been with Harry? Listen, I mean, that's why, like, well, remember the night I met you right. and you were leaving and I stopped you and I said, I need a picture with you because you're a living legend. Mm -hmm. I feel like you are talked about more on this show and you're not on it. Like that's, that's, do you know how hard that's that is? That's the genius. That's it's what I the like genius. It. You can get your phone if you want. No, no, no. I don't have any. Harry's a very busy guy. I, you know. By the way, I do work. You I do? work every day. Because yes. all, all these articles say you don't work. I know. That's retarded, but that's I mean, okay. Like, so what do you do for work? I am a real estate developer, investor. I put deals together um, from here to Washington to Miami. I've done real estate developments in L.A., but I don't think your, your audience wants to hear about my professional career no i mean this is it's, i mean it's, it's very it funny kind of bankers you ready for this bankers when i'm doing business it takes them two three hundred pages to get to the meat of my business i was on the cover of the wall street journal the new york times business real estate washington post real estate miami herald los angeles times i mean i have a real career in a real business um, that's thriving. So I don't care what they say. I get it. Listen, people always ask me what, like, you know, people ask me what I do for a living. I, mean, I wish I was Peter Pan. I'd love to fly. Let's go to Never Never Land. And just have like a life of leisure. No, no. I mean, life of leisure. I travel constantly. You travel a lot. I thought I traveled mm -hmm. a lot. You were just in Dubai. Yep. You were just in Istanbul. Florida. Yeah, I've never been to Estonia. Going to Florida tomorrow. I'm going to Harbor Island, but it's okay. You, yeah, I know. This, yeah, I think people think that you have a trust fund and you've never worked a day in your life. That's, and you just are chilling out at the Regency all day. Oh, yeah, that's really exciting to get yeah. on the same bar stool every day and sit there. No. That's why last night when Nolan and Kat and all of them were texting, I was like, I'm downtown. I just can't come up there tonight. Nope. Well, speaking Any of- Any place that you go to, it gets boring. it gets boring. It does get boring. It gets boring. Friday night, I was happy I came. But like, you know, then you're like, I need a moment off from this place. Exactly. What was, although they do have the best popcorn in the city. That popcorn is amazing. I, I truly. That's, what are we doing? An advertisement for the Regency? <laughs> I know. Well, really, the Regency should give you something. They should give me a lot. Seriously. You and. Well, Dorinda threw her shoe at me one day there. Oh, yeah. I forgot to ask you about Dorinda. What do you think of Dorinda? Dorinda and I have had a checkered past. You know what? Get in line. Her and I have had a checkered past. She. Um, I've known her. For probably 15 years. She's friends of a friend of a couple I know. Yeah. We just never really, we always butt heads. That's She's all. tough. We butt heads. She's tough. And one night I was in the Regency and it was Rosh Hashanah and I was going to meet some people around the corner. So I had my son meet me there. 
and she saw my son with me, and she started cursing at me. How dare I bring a child into the bar of the Regency? Meanwhile, it's a hotel lounge. Yeah. Sort of stupid. And we got in a scuffle. She threw her shoe at my buddy. And I walked out of there. And the next thing I know, it's in the paper. Because some idiot put it in the paper. But that's the type of... Interesting. I, I didn't even know that. There. Yeah. I didn't even know that. Interesting. See? Not that interesting. It's just a shoe. Well, when I said I was going to do research before we sat down, you said, I don't need to do any research. We should just ch- talk. And I was like, okay, well, I kind of appreciate that. No, but I think that that is the genius that you – listen, I think the two people that are talked about on the show are you and Tom D'Agostino. Tom's a good friend of mine. I know. You guys Danny still talk. And girl. And he's Palm no Beach. longer – he's not at the Regency anymore. Does he still he live here? in Palm Beach. Oh, well, there you go. That's why. He's down there, has a girlfriend, and living the good life. And he's happy down there. Very. That's good. Well, if he ever comes back to New York. He's here today. Oh, wow. One day I need to meet Tom. No problem. You know, call him and get him on the phone. I, 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 I don't think he wants to talk about Bravo. No. We can talk about other things. We, as, long as, as long as someone just wants to hang out and – you see me at night. As long as someone just wants to hang out and have a drink, that's really all I ask. We can never talk about Bravo. And I liked your friend you were with the other night. Who? Because I text, she texted me. That Jersey girl. I forgot her name. The one from Rumson. Oh, yeah. She's a sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. I love her. Good friend. You know, I mean that's the thing. The girls and the gays, we like love each other. That's true. This is why when I – when I see you and you're with all these girls i'm like this girls is... and gays like one thing dick of course actually <laughs> now that you mention this you know what i'm gonna say we had that conversation one yes, night we did and i was drunk i admit it and wait i think you were asking me what it is about being what it is that i why am i gay i think yes i did and i was like very simple yep i like to suck dick oh well i mean I, I, at least i was honest about it it's okay. I like pussy. What yeah, I tell you? it's kind of it's kind of the same thing. And I think you and I. Well, I don't know. You, you do you have a type? Yeah, you do. Because the other night, you, when you were showing me that picture of this, I like friend. A, I like a beautiful, nice woman. And you don't care if they're blonde or dark hair. No. Maybe a preference for blondes. Could be. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Like, I don't care what color hair you have. Like, if there was a gun to my head, I would probably choose a blonde over a non-blonde. I mean, as a gorgeous brunette with blue eyes, I wouldn't say no. Absolutely. I wouldn't say no. And you like skinny. Very and skinny. And I like I'm I'm okay with that. See, we actually have the same type. That's good. Yeah. It's just I like men and you like women. Perfect. But, you know... But yes, when you bring your girls around, I love them all. Like, I love that other blonde girl the other night, too, the one that left. That tall who. blonde. And you, you don't know who she is. Oh, Caroline. Yeah. Yes, she was nice. She I was I surround right. myself with good people. You do? Well, this is the thing. Like, you are, I have to say, I, I told you this the other night, like, you are very gracious. Because, you know, like, I met you, we kind of became friends, and, like, every time you introduce me, you say, like, this is David, he has a major, like, Bravo podcast. Like, you definitely try to help me. I like to pitch everybody. You do? You're like in sales in like a good way. Yeah. Speaking of real estate, should I buy an apartment? I mean, I've owned apartments in the city. Now I rent. Is this really the time to buy? Not a – nope. I don't think so either. I have a, some brokers that are really all about me buying. No, it's going to go down. More? Yes. Okay. The reason why they're after you now is because it's the winter. I, I mean after estate, me like they, nobody's fucking business. Wait till August. They'll be really? after you again. And hopefully the stock market's not going to come down. No. Really? Okay, good. Well, if because it's high, the Dems get into the office, it's going to crash. <coughs> that is very true. It's going to just crash. You get Bernie in there, forget it. It will be ten thousand tops. It could crash because it's like almost too good to be true right now. Right. Like two thousand nineteen is like what? All right. I, just, I was just because you mentioned real estate. I'm like, I might as well get some real estate nope. advice here because I have, I have, I've been looking a little bit, but I don't want to pull the trigger yet. <sighs> now, what? should I ask you specific questions? Good. You said you told me I can ask you anything. Right. Really. 
Well, I don't, I don't have to answer. You them. don't have to answer. <laughs> this is what I would. I mean, I, forget about the audience. I don't, guys. I'm doing this for you, but I have my own questions. All right, who is who's the best? Yeah, or like, let's start with a simple question: Who's better in bed, Sonia or Luann? There's nothing that I would like to know more. And what are the differences between them? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. <laughs> That's a good one. I have to give you credit. You see, I, I, I welcome you. I offer you coffee. You, you massaging me yes. to this point where now come the real question. You say you don't want to talk about real estate. Who is better in bed, Sonia or Luann? And what are the actual differences between a night with Miss Morgan and a night with Miss Delaseps? Because, you know, my mind goes pretty wild for both of those women behind closed doors. Sonia is very passionate. She has these shutters in her room where you can't see anything. The best way I can describe both of these girls is, is Sonia, you can't see her while you're having sex. And Luann likes to do it in the light. And so Interesting. It's, two different um, passions uh, when you see someone actually having sex and when it's completely pitch dark it's sort of weird as well so I mean you get a different feeling it's not that one's better than the other it's just different interesting I could go into explicit details but I don't think your audience wants to know those I, I mean, I'm not going to stop you from talking. I mean, I have questions. So Sonia likes blackout shades, like pure, pure, pure dark. Pure dark. And Luann wants to look into your eyes. Not look into your eyes, but the lights are on. Really? Yeah. Interesting. And as far as just being like fun, you know, like, listen. Luann we, is. And this is. Luann is a screamer. Sonia is not. Really? Yes. Interesting. And okay, yeah, and I guess who's the best then? I mean, let's just they're so, both great in different ways. And you've had them, you've kissed Ramona, and obviously F Ramona's a great kisser. Really? What do you want me to tell you? See, I think Ramona behind closed doors would also be. <laughs> I would, I would tend to agree with you. I haven't done that though. Would you? Or she's too good a friend. There have been weirder things in life that's happened. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I can't say no or yes. Now, if you had to go back, if you had to choose between you can go home with one of these women at night, Bethany or Miss Zarin, who would you rather spend in, in, a night with? And I mean a night. Like, go home and do everything. That's a simple. I mean, I love Jill, but of course it would be Bethany. What about Bethany or Tim? She fits our profile. She's very thin. skinny. See, I would think you good body. I would think you would find Tinsley attractive. Then. She's very pretty because she's very skinny. Very skinny. Okay. Okay. Just because I haven't slept with her or kissed I... her doesn't mean I don't think she's attractive. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I just want. I, I just, yeah. I love my Tinsley. There's something about Tinsley that I love. But it's different. You love her because there's no brain cells. <sighs> I love her because she's so fun. Fun? She's not fun at all. Really? I mean, like, I don't know her that well, but... I knew her when she was married. I've known her for a long time. Back when she was an it girl. Mm-hmm. Well, I think her time is over. I mean, I think she walked off the show or is just done. I don't have any clue. Yeah. That's... You won't know until the next season when she's not there. You're going to say, oh, it was true. It's back. I mean, I wonder. It's it's back. It's coming These back. These work their ass off. You do know that. Yes. They work probably 12-hour days, six months a year. It's. I don't think it's an easy job. It's I mean, an easy job. But, and then they have to pay for all of the... The booze and the the parties and the lunches and the dinners. The clothes. The clothes and the hair and the makeup. The production company doesn't do anything for these girls. Nothing. 
and your first and their own storyline. So if you don't have a storyline, you don't you're not asked back the next year. Yes, I mean I have yes. That's all I agree with all that. The first year, first of all, you don't even make any money. You, you make, make sixty. Grand. Yes, uh, that's exactly what, yes. Approximately the, the second year, probably like one twenty. Who cares? It's a meaningless thing. It's a lot. Speaking of being asked back, the bottom line is, if you're on this show, you need a product to sell. Or else don't go on this show. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. I agree. Like Bethany did very well. Mm -hmm. And others have tried. Not as well. But I agree. I If I were on the show, I would hold on for every second, save my money, and think of all my side projects. It's the side hustle, I think. No, you're on the show to advertise your product. That's it. But what if you don't have a product? Then you shouldn't be on the show. Right. Like Dorinda didn't have a product. I don't know. I mean, I, you know, quite frankly, I haven't seen the show in a long time, so I have no clue. See? That's probably – you're probably better off. I don't watch it. I mean – It's my life, so why should I watch something it, that happens literally, to me every day? I feel the – and I've said this on the show before. I feel the one person who got the – cut her time got cut short the most was Aviva. Well, I'll tell you, Aviva has anxiety. She cannot travel. Without her husband or a loved one. For right. some reason, I have no clue why. I do know why, because it's a product of her accident when she was six years old. She right. has anxiety. And she couldn't travel with the girls and couldn't do the things the production company wanted her to do. Right. So therefore, they had to get rid of her. Right. Like, she didn't go on the Throwing trail. Throwing leg was a joke. They asked me to... She asked me to... Walk her out of the room after that and yell at the girls. And I said, this shit ain't happening. Throwing the leg, though, was one of the best moments. It was at Le Cirque. Yes, it was. And I'm sitting at the bar. And she's sitting there in the lounge where they're filming. She comes out and says, Harry, you got you to gotta help me. You got to help me. You, I'm going to throw my leg on national television. And you pick me up and carry me out of the scene and tell them what kind of people are these. And I said, Aviva, my ass ain't going to do that. She wants Not you to have a fucking chance. She wants you to carry her out. Yep. That would have been epic. Nope. You were like, not doing Not it. happening. Not doing it. Uh-uh. That would have been amazing. That was one of, I mean, I, I just feel her time was cut short. I, I honestly do. It can, you know, if you have a job, you have a job. She has a job. She has to go travel and yeah. yell at girls. And there was a lot of – there was other rumors too that Carol oh, – did you, did you know Carol Roswell? Very well. There was rumors that she was so close to Andy Cohn and is true. she wanted Aviva gone because the whole it's ghost true. Writing. However, the number one reason is exactly what I just told you. Yeah, that makes nothing sense. Nothing to do with Andy Cohn, nothing to do with Radswell. That makes sense. R Razzie doesn't come into the Regency too much. Never. She's a downtown She's girl. She's downtown. Do you guys ever go out downtown? Yeah. Will you visit the fam downtown? No, I go downtown. You do? Yeah. I just places. always think all oh, the people up there. It's a pain to be, you know what it is? That's why I didn't come up last night. I don't night. care where you live in this city. You make it simple on yourself. You go to five bars, five restaurants. And then you figure out the rest of the the city because you can't deviate from your your area because you're just comfortable. I agree. You have good options in your area. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. You're Not tired really. of all. I have to say I'm also – I need a break from Le Bibliqué. Le Bibliqué, the Carlisle, the Mark. The Gaul. Regency, and La Galou. La Galou. Maybe – Two others, but that's it. Yeah. You guys never go to El Molino? I don't like El Molino. Really? I don't like the space. I like the food. Food's Italian food. What do you mean? I don't know. I'm like over Le Bib, though. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So, all right. So, you answered those questions. You answered those questions. Tinsley. Anything else you want to talk about? Whatever you want. 
Um, all right. So I asked you between Sonia and Luann, you would rather sleep with Bethany. Would you rather sleep with Bethany or Ramona? Oh my God. This is like a lot of would, would you rathers? This is where my people audience. like to hear this stuff? Yeah. There's honestly, I don't think there's anything that people want to hear more. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to hear Ramona. much more. I'd rather sleep with Ramona. Really? Yeah. Haven't done it, but you asked me between those two. Okay. Who would you, and Sonia, who, who would you rather marry, Sonia or Luann? Sonia? I mean, is that a pretty yes. obvious question? Sonia, when she is nice, she's incredibly sweet. And when she's not... And when is she, she not nice? A lot of the time. Unfortunately, the funny thing about all these girls is that they're known, they're not famous, and they think they're very famous. There's a difference being known and famous. Famous, you actually have talent, and you do something. Like a famous actor. Like an athlete or an actor. Or a dancer or whatever. These are just girls yelling and screaming at each other. And they have 10 cameras on them. And they're doing what they do. Making storylines. Love them all. But they're not famous. They're known. And when they think they're famous, they get into this different way of thinking. And it screws them up. Do you think the show has changed all of them? Like, are like do you do you think the show has changed Ramona? Do you think the show has changed Luann? Do you think the show has changed Sonia? Those three in particular it's actually changed Sonia. How so? She believes the hype that goes along, the little minions that go along with her. Oh, you're you're this, you're this, you're this, you're this, 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 this. She doesn't realize those minions are going to be gone the minute the show's done. Yeah. And then she's going to have a major fall from grace. But uh, the other ones, no. I mean, Ramona I think was always... Luann always wanted to be a cabaret singer. Always. Really? Yeah. Always? Yeah. That was her dream in life. She always loved singing, you know? So this isn't something new for me. So um, Ramona is Ramona. Yes. Um, See, that's why I love Ramona because is as rude so as is Dorinda. Dorinda's Dorinda, and Bethany is Bethany, my ex-wife. Eh, maybe she exaggerated it a little bit. Um, but she's now back to living, you know, her own life. Like yes. she's not trying to. No. Like I don't think Aviva. I mean, I don't know, but I don't think she ever got caught up in all the hype. Granted, she was on the oh, show. She got caught. She did. Don't don't, don't bullshit yourself. Oh. Of course, she did. Um, Heather never did. Heather stayed Actually the same. Actually hurt Heather, I think. You think so? With yeah. her business? Uh-huh. Yeah, because the business isn't around anymore. Nope. So, I mean, I don't think it helped her. I think there are negative ramifications just 100%. for being on the show. Yes. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Like, you would think, because everyone has a shelf life on the show, I mean... You've seen a million pe people get fired. Even Ramona. I mean, there's chatter that Ramona might be off soon. I mean, this is just the chatter. Like, you would think you would, to your point, not rise to the believing the hype and be like, I'm nothing so special. And this is just, let you me take help my. It. You can't help it. Because it, it, it just fuels you after you get the fuel. It's almost like having. Like a it's drug. Like, it's like being a poor person. And becoming rich, and then becoming poor again. Ugh, that doesn't sound fun. Nope. Well, they say it's better to have never made money than to have made tons of money That's and lose correct. it. I, I would agree with that. that. So it's better to not have fame or notoriety than to have it. You think? Yeah. Look at all these child stars who became idiots. Yeah. Whatever. Fame is a tough drug, I think. Yes, it's a drug. And when it goes away, that's it. Some people can't handle it. Don't know what to do. Interesting. So you think Sonia's changed the most? Probably, yes. That's interesting. Do you remember like when they were first casting the show way back? Uh -huh. Like was there chatter? I mean like the Manhattan Moms, that's what it was called, and Jill was the first one. Like was there a buzz around the Upper East Side no. of like 
No. This is going to be something huge and everyone wants to be in this. You know, everyone on the Upper East Side, they all need to have something. Someone's a jewelry designer. Someone's a dress designer. They need something besides their kids. And so a lot of the moms uh, always said that they were casted and the crew came over to the house to, you know, do a bit. Right. And I think three quarters of them were full of shit, but who Probably. Cares? Probably. And I mean, now is there, like, amongst people you know, is there a, like, oh, I really want to be on that? No. And there's a lot of people that don't. They're like, it's the last if thing I want to They have a product, they want to be on Right. It. That's it. But if you're doing well in life and you've got money, I you think you- don't need you'd... to be on it. Right. It's the last thing they want. Right. I would- Like my friend Sheila. She's good friends with Ramona. They begged her to go on it. She doesn't need to go on it. She no plenty interest. Plenty of money, plenty of stuff. She's just like, no thank you. No thank you. Right. And like I would imagine to walk into a bar you and see, not- see, she has a horse business, so she might have done it for the business. Right. But- you have to weigh it. Right. Well, Av- did Aviva didn't have a product, did she? I don't think so. You're bashing her leg on her husband's head. Seriously. No, I'm kidding. But she, she had, did she have that? Yeah, she, she, well, I mean, she wrote a book afterwards. I don't think she had the book before. She did write the book. She yeah. She didn't write it. She had a ghostwriter. Yes. I never read it. <laughs> Thank God. I never read it, but when I was going to her house, I was like, I wish I had a copy of this because I wanted her to sign it. This is this is how my mind thinks. She was you like, want really? an autograph from Aviva? It, That's like no, retarded. I know, but like you just – for the show, it would have been like one of those I, – I didn't have a copy. I, I couldn't find a copy of it, but I, I've like never read it either. It was not really an autograph. It's like they signed the book. You have it. It's kind of like tongue in cheek. That's silly. Well, I don't have it, and I haven't spoken to her since after we've sat down because she, but she was a very gracious host. She served food. She served tequila. There was no vodka. I got a little drunk. It was it was a good time. Are we done? We are really pretty much wrapping up. Anything else you want to end with? I mean. Basically, all these girls are great girls. Love them all. They're having fun. They're doing what they know. What they wouldn't be on, they wouldn't be on TV for thirteen years. Yeah, if they didn't know what they were doing. It's a moment in time. Like it's going to end at some time. It's going to end. Not, it's not like The Simpsons. The Simpsons will never end. No. Housewives. I mean, they're getting older. Yes. They need younger ones. Well. Stay tuned because in March, the new – the person who's replacing Bethany, so to speak, Leah McSweeney, who's amazing, and she's 38 years old. I met her. Love her. Love her. She's close with Elise. I love her. Thoughts? Have fun watching the next episodes. It's going to be good. I really appreciate you coming down here. My I know pleasure. you're busy. We're going to have drinks at the Regency this week. I love this. You love Stay me, tuned right? To David. He's the best podcast guy. Harry is the best. He is a lot of fun to hang out with. I'm very happy we met at the Regency. I really appreciate this. And love out to all of you who are listening. Love you all. Bye. Thanks for listening to yet another episode of Behind the Velvet Rope. Because without you listeners, I would just be a crazy person with voices in my head. And if you like what you hear... Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe on Apple Podcasts under Behind the Velvet Rope. And when you're done subscribing, feel free to leave a five-star write-up review because the write-up reviews actually count. We read each and every one of them. We post the best ones and the reviews really help our shows keep going. And we really appreciate everything you guys say, especially the positive ones. And if you want to find us online, we're at Behind Velvet Rope on Instagram. We are at David Yontef on Instagram. We're Behind The Velvet Rope on Apple Podcasts. 
or head on over to Patreon because you know what? There are just some things we can't talk about here. So for our bonus episodes, go to Patreon and type in Behind the Velvet Rope. And if you still aren't sick of me and you want more David, go to Cameo and book me on Cameo. And you can ask me anything there. I'll answer whatever you want. And I have a bargain basement price of $10. Thank you guys. See you soon.